I didn't ever uh, try to commit fraud on anyone. Former FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried speaking at the New York Times' DealBook Summit yesterday, the first appearance since his firm collapsed and billions of dollars went missing. SBF claiming he did not commit fraud after losing billions of investor funds and then fleeing to the Bahamas. FTX, the big exchange, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The chief executive, Sam Bankman-Fried, has resigned. $60 billion down to $9 billion. FTX no. is trying to explain to investors how they lost billions I of dollars. I didn't ever I try to commit fraud on anyone else. But again, there are many out there who believe he's just a pathological liar. Pathological liar. Sam Bankman-Fried is going down as the number one con man in the history of financial crimes. At peak, his crypto exchange, FTX, was worth a whopping $32 billion. And now, it's currently worth $0. In this video, we're going to talk about what happened, what the implications are for crypto, and what do we do from here. Here's what happened. So, it all started with Sam Bankman-Fried, or as he's known on the internet, SBF. Now, SBF is a boy genius trader, went to MIT, and then worked at the very prestigious Jane Street Trading. He worked for a couple years until he decided that the maximum way that he could do good in the world, or at least this is what he said, uh, was by taking the most risk possible, and so he started his own firm, Alameda Research. Alameda Research first started making money through something called the kimchi arbitrage, which was taking advantage of the price difference of Bitcoin between Korea and the rest of the world. After that, they moved from delta neutral strategies. Those are strategies that don't rely on crypto going up to strategies that were no longer market neutral, ones that relied on crypto going up for them to make money. At a certain point, SBF and his executives at Alameda Research decided that they could make even more money if they created a crypto exchange called FTX. They marketed themselves for pro traders uh, and grew very, very quickly. After starting off in 2019, FTX saw a rapid ascent to the moon. SBF brought in stars like Giselle and Tom Brady and Larry David to do Super Bowl commercials and then raised money at a $32 billion valuation from Sequoia and other Silicon Valley investors. And he did it all purportedly with just 25 engineers. This all started to fall apart in June of 2022. What happened is Terra, which ran an algorithmic stablecoin called Luna, which Pegged the price of a token called UST to one US dollar, started to depeg. This meant that people's faith in this algorithmic stablecoin vanished overnight and there was a run on the bank. And that's never good. Remember when we were all at home and COVID just started and everyone said there's not going to be enough toilet paper and people's alarm bells started going off and they said, well, I'd better go and stockpile some and get mine now. That's kind of what a bank run is like. You have all of your dollars sitting in an account somewhere and somebody says those dollars are going to be worth less pretty soon or possibly you're never going to see them again. What do you do? Immediately, you run to that institution and you try to take your money out. And that's what happened with Terra Luna. Unfortunately, that had adverse effects for many hedge funds and financial financial institutions in the crypto space that were holding that asset. And they started to fall like dominoes. That included Three Arrows Capital, or 3AC, a crypto hedge fund. And of course, unknown at the time, but now it's been revealed, it also affected Alameda Research. And Sam tried to hide this by bailing out the other companies in the space. Now everyone thought SBF was a savior in the industry. He bailed out, he extended loans to Voyager and BlockFi to bail them out, ostensibly because he didn't want the crypto contagion to spread. It turns out that Alameda was also insolvent at the time. And that's when Sam decided to take $8 billion of customer deposits from FTX and send that money to his hedge fund, Alameda Research, which is not only completely illegal and unethical, it's also against FTX's own terms of service. Now, certain people saw this coming. Sam Trabuco was CEO of Alameda Research and several months ago decided to quit, at which point Sam appointed Carolyn Ellison to be the new CEO. Now, it's come to light that SBF and Carolyn Ellison, along with many of the FTX executives, were all in a polycule, a polyamorous methamphetamine-fueled love fest. So how did Alameda justify taking money from FTX? Here's what happened. FTX created an exchange token called FTT. FTT was a token that's theoretically was created to reward users of the FTX platform. If usage on the FTX platform went up, in theory, this token's value also would go up. Now, Alameda Research got some of this token for free or cheap. They either pre-mined the token or they bought it at a very low price. FTX then started buying back this token. The price of the token went up, but remember this is on 
on a very small circulating supply where most of the token is locked up. And that means that you can have a very low float but high market value token. A token that in theory, the market cap is billions of dollars, but really there's only tens of millions or hundreds of millions in actual value exchange every day. Now, FTX pumps FTT and all of a sudden Alameda's paper assets are worth $14 billion. Then Alameda sends that FTT back to FTX and borrows real customer deposits, securing it with this made up token. Now that's like, I have a private company and it has a million shares and then I sell a thousand of those shares for a million dollars to somebody. And I say my company is now worth a billion dollars because I still have 999,000 shares. But of course, if I try to unload those shares and there's no other buyers, the real value of my company is not going to be a billion. Fast forward to the first week of November. CZ is the CEO of a rival exchange called Binance that led FTX's seed round and exchange ended up with a lot of FTT token. Now CZ is mad at SBF and he's mad because Sam is going to Washington DC and telling everybody we should regulate crypto and specifically creating a regulatory framework that other people in the industry think favors FTX over other exchanges. And Sam ends up making a joke on Twitter to CZ, hey, can you even come to DC? You're probably doing something that's illegal in the US and can't even travel to the US to defend yourself. So CZ understandably is like, Fuck you. Now a week or so prior, uh, there was a report on Coindesk and it exposed that Alameda's balance sheet was heavily weighted towards FTT, this highly illiquid token that FTX had created. So CZ, who through Binance was a large holder of FTT, decided to announce on Twitter that he was going to unload it all, which of course crashed the price of FTT. Now CZ only had a couple hundred million dollars of FTT tokens, but this immediately started the price of FTT sliding. Now Caroline Ellison, Alameda Research's CEO, tweeted and said, we'll buy the whole lot from you for $22. But CZ was kind of like, F you, we just want to sell it on the open market, knowing that that was going to cause FTT token price to slide. What he didn't know was this would push Alameda into insolvency. But the next morning, there was a tweet that announced from Sam that Binance was going to buy FTX. But why did this happen? When CZ started selling his FTT token, uh, it turns out that the value, the paper value of Alamy Research's assets went through the floor and they could no longer afford to pay back the customer deposits they had been borrowing from FTX. Now FTX is in a lot of trouble and Sam knows it's not cool that they took all these customer deposits and handed them to Alamy to research. So he immediately starts going and looking for emergency funding. The rumor has it he's calling everybody in Silicon Valley and the only lifeline he could get was from CZ. So CZ agrees to acquire the company. The next day, CZ announced that the deal was off. After doing preliminary due diligence, he decided that it was best to walk away from the FTX acquisition, which makes sense because customers were spooked. FTX had frozen customer withdrawals and what is an exchange worth or any financial institution unless you have the trust of your customers? Now it turns out after the fact, we realized there was all sorts of fraudulent behavior happening at FTX. Sam had bought hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate off the FTX balance sheet. He had given himself hundreds of millions of dollars at funds that they'd raised from venture capitalists. And he'd been making investments with these customer deposits into illiquid venture investments, which completely makes no sense. Reportedly, Sam had even offered Elon $5 billion as part of a Twitter investment. And, and Elon called his bluff. He was like, does that guy even have the money? There's probably dozens of people in the world, or a dozen, that have $5 billion in cash. Most people do not have billions of dollars of cash liquid lying around. It takes time for them to actually liquidate that and raise funds. And so the idea that Sam actually just had 5 billion liquid is like, it didn't pass the smell test. Most recently, Sam stepped down as CEO of FTX and FTX US and FTX, FTX US and Alameda Research all filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. So what happens now? Well, the contagion has spread to other actors. FTX has lost $8 billion of customer deposits and included in those customers were crypto hedge funds, venture capitalists, and crypto companies. So a ton of companies have come out and said, well, uh, we can no longer continue operation because all of our funds were on FTX. So there will be a contagion that ripples through the crypto ecosystem as funds and actors in the crypto world can no longer pay for their business operations and continue to run their projects. SBF is currently sitting in the Bahamas. That's where he says he is, purportedly. And it's unclear if he's gonna go to jail. Now, he should go to jail. This has been the biggest financial crime of history. But regulars are gonna need to understand what exactly to charge him for in this web of frauds. Reportedly, some of the other FTX executives are still there. But most of them have, quit, have been quitting en masse. De Contagion is definitely not done. It's still unfolding who has been affected. And a lot of people who can't operate their business, they haven't gone 
gone public and said that yet. They've been scrambling to raise emergency funds or figure it out. But unfortunately, you know, this is not a good time in the market in general for private companies or crypto projects to be raising funds. And so I think a lot of them are going to come up empty. This is not the end of centralized exchanges. There are companies that remain like Coinbase that hold customer deposits one on one that are trustworthy. But I do think it's going to institute a new wave of regulation globally for crypto as you know, there have been a lot of retail customers that have been hurt by this. Personally, I know friends who have lost millions of dollars who have them sitting on the exchange. Hopefully this will be a lesson to the people who want to participate in the crypto market that you should not trust crypto counterparties. You should hold your own keys, hold your own coins, leaving your coins and your crypto assets on an unregulated exchange or financial institution is a huge amount of counterparty risk that you can't even calculate. I think what happens is there are some crypto hedge funds that may be affected because most of their assets or a significant part of their assets were on FTX or they had huge market exposure. But most of these larger VCs, including the ones that have invested in FTX, are not going to be affected, even though they look terrible and they look like they did no diligence. The amount of funds that was actually directly invested in FTX was actually quite low. You know, FTX raised a billion dollars, which seems like a lot of money over the course of its couple of years of existence. But at the same time, hundreds of billions of dollars were invested in the venture capital industry. So for a lot of these funds, you know, it only represents less than 1% of their total assets under management. So what do you do if you're in this market? Well, for anybody on this list, whether you're a retail investor, a founder building a crypto project, or a you know professional crypto investor, you should remember that the counterparties in this market are new and it's probably best not to trust them. You don't know how much counterparty risk you're taking by leaving your coins on an exchange or in any of these different financial institutions. Now, if you're retail, what does that mean? Buy a ledger, keep your crypto on that ledger. In general, uh, you should be investing, I think, in primarily Bitcoin and then just holding it for a very, very long time. If you're a founder, you can believe in crypto and the future of decentralized applications on the internet without having an opinion on which direction the price of tokens is going to move. And so when I think about holding our own treasuries of our projects, I think about we should not be holding any of these tokens unless we're making an educated bet that the token price is going to go a certain direction. And we're not doing that because we're not a crypto hedge fund. You know, we're builders, we're building a project. So in my companies, when we're taking receipts of in crypto, like we're earning Solana or Ethereum for running different businesses, we're trying to sell that down every week. Because even though I might personally be long some of these assets, as a company, our business is not making directional bets on tokens. Now, as an investor, once again, the counterparties rule applies. You should not be holding your tokens on counterparties that you don't know anything about. When you're looking at projects, you should be looking at people who are building for the future, building for these crypto uses that actually provide some utility. If you're an investor, the one thing I'll say is, you know, there was this huge tailwind that was pumping crypto over the last couple of years. You had this huge amount of stimulus money going into the economy and all sorts of assets, private company stocks, public company, tech companies, valuations, art, sports teams, and cryptos, we're all going through the moon. And I think that era is over now. You should think, do I actually have a delta neutral strategy that can be successful in a market where crypto is not gonna moon, which I think is gonna be the case for the next couple of years at least. Final thought, SBF, if you're watching this, nobody is gonna invest $8 billion in FTX right now so that you can just give it to the customers that you stole money from. That is a fantasy. Just give yourself up and prepare to go to jail. But of course, the good news is lots of great companies are built when times are lean and everyone thinks the market is dead. In the most recent tech wave, that was companies like Airbnb, Uber, Instacart, and of course, Twitch. So if you're a talented founder, there's gonna be a lot to build. So good luck and stay safe.